Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. How is everybody doing this evening? How is everybody doing this evening? Y'all know who it is. Yep, y'all know who it is. <laughs> Gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> it's your boy. It's <laughs> your boy. E Hood. Pastor Full Impact Ministries. How is everybody doing this evening? How is everybody doing? I pray all is going well. I pray everything is wonderful. I pray everything is doing marvelous in your life. I just pray that you continue to grow. I pray that you continue to walk in your blessed life. And all is well with you. In Jesus' name. I want you all to begin to get some people to join me tonight for a real good teaching that I'm about to do. And I want you all to really grow in what I am uh, about to give you all. It is going to open your mind. It is going to stretch your mind. It is going to stretch your knowledge in your Christian walk. It is going to stretch your knowledge in a whole lot of things. As far as you being a born again believer, it's going to stretch your mind like never before. And I'm going to speak to you about the truth about prophesying and speaking in tongues. The truth about prophesying and speaking in tongues. And I'm going to begin to bring some things to y'all. Welcome y'all. And I want you all to begin to share this here message. This is going to be very educational for a lot of us and it's going to really broaden our knowledge and our horizon as far as on the topic of prophesying and speaking in tongues and i'm going to reveal some things that may be shocking to you that may be now now let me start off by saying that I'm in full agreement with praying in tongues. I believe in praying in tongues like never before. I I, I believe it. But I, I believe it because I have an understanding of it. I have an understanding of it. You know, but but like all of us, we don't have full understanding in anything in the scriptures. This is why uh, Apostle Paul said that we know in part. So this is why. Being a Christian is a continual lifelong journey of studying the scripture. This is why the scripture speaks over in 2 Timothy 2, uh, 2 15. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. This is why the scripture says over in Proverbs 4 7, Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And in all I get, we need to get some understanding. This is why the scripture speaks constantly, constantly, constantly about getting in the word of God. Wisdom, wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, it speaks about wisdom like never before. And it speaks about that wisdom is more precious than silver and gold. Hey, blank, bless you, darling. And it speaks about wisdom is more precious than silver and, and gold. And I'm going to um and I'm going to open the scriptures up so we can begin to get a real understanding of the truth about prophesying and speaking in tongues. See, I know many of you all um you rush to the prophetic conference so you can get a word. You get on social media when you hear one of the prophets come on and speak about that they have a word for you and you rush on there and you listen to it and all this stuff here. But it's because you have not studied the scriptures. You have not studied the scriptures. So which, so which means it leaves you open and vulnerable to be deceived. But your boyhood, Pastor Full Impact Ministries, the social media ministry, ah, that's bringing banging truth ah, of the scriptures for you. I'm about to bring you something. Let's go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. This is when Apostle Paul is speaking and, and he's bringing clarity and he's bringing real clear truth on on the division and true purposes of prophesying and speaking in tongues. Let's crank this thing up. Let's get it cracking. 
going to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse 1. This is Apostle Paul. This is his first letter to the church of Corinth. Now, the church of Corinth, now they operated in all the scripture gifts, but they were very carnal, sort of like the church today. But, but now he is going to break down, and he is going to give clear distinction of both prophesying and speaking in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. And I will be reading most of this from the Amplified. Check this out. Verse 1. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this. Love, make it your aim, your great quest, and earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual en endowments, gifts, especially that you may prophesy, interpret the divine will and purpose and inspired preaching and teaching. He said, now out of all the gifts, the main one you need to be designed is to prophesy. He's going to go into it. He's going to show you why. Over in verse 2, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue, now he's separating, now he's giving you distinct, clear clarity of the division of both of them. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. So when you, so when you are speaking in tongues, you are not speaking to anybody but the Lord. Many people don't understand that. Many people don't have a clue of what they're doing, which means now when you don't understand something of what you're doing, it means that you're doing it out of ignorance and watch this here. And in most cases, you are mimicking what you what you have seen done, which in the which in the notes shows you that there's no power. Hey, Yolanda, bless you, sis. Shows you that there's no power in it. And this is why people can pray in tongues and don't understand what they're doing, and they wonder why there's no power come. There's no wisdom come. There's no understanding come from it. What's it? For no one understands or catches his meaning. And many and many pray in tongues to front to be seen because they operate not a spirit of pride, but don't have a clue of what they're doing. So what many will call them praying in tongues, all they are really doing is mimicking something. Because in the Holy Spirit, he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. So speaking in tongues really has to do with a secret I spy code that you send into heaven. It has nothing to do with you standing in front of people and going with no meaning and looking like you're super deep but have no understanding of what you're doing because you're the mimic your favorite pastor or your private or apostle and all this stuff here. No Speaking in tongues has everything to do with a secret coding that is going up to heaven that even the devil cannot detect. Because your flesh, your mind has no understanding of what you're doing. But in the Holy Spirit, it knows exactly what you're speaking because it interprets what you're speaking. You don't have a clue. And it is a secret code. Verse 3. Hey, Lamont, bless you, bless you. But, but, but on the other hand, the one who prophesies, watch this here, who interprets the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching, watch this here, speaks to men. Now, when he speak, now, so, so when he say men, he's speaking about both genders, men and women. For there, watch this here, this is what prophesying is for. And he's going to show you who is to. This is what prophesying is for. For their upbuilding and constructive spiritual progress and encouragement and conversation. Notice what it didn't say. It did not say for rebuking. Many of you prophets believe that you are to prophesy to the saints and rebuke them. That's not what the scripture tells you to do. The, 
the scripture about prophesying clearly in the scripture tells you what you are to do with your prophetic gift when it comes to the people of God. You are to speak to men for their upbuilding and constructive spiritual progress and encouragement and consolation. It has nothing to do with you putting people on front street, putting their negative things out. That, my prophets, is not God. Hey, Kevin, bless you, my brother. That is not God. That is not the Lord. That is your flesh. That is your pride. Want to be seen and want to front people. That is not God. God is not out to expose his people. He loves his people. He loves his children. Verse 4. He who speaks in a strange tongue, watch this, edifies and improves himself. You speaking in tongue has everything to do with you edifying and actually improving yourself in the things of the Lord. Nobody else. Nobody else. It's not for you to stand in front of folks and front like you super deep. That's not what it's for. It is for you solely. It is, it is secret coding over in verse 2. It is secret coding and it is to improve you. It is to strengthen you. It is to improve you. It is to edify you. Speaking in tongues is to build you up. This is why over, over in First Peter, he speaks about praying in your most holiest faith. So when you pray and you're feeling down and out and you're discouraged, you can begin by praying in tongues. And you have to do it with the understanding of that this is building you up. This has nothing to do with anybody else. It's building you up. It's edifying you. And it is giving you wisdom on what to do in the things that's pertaining to your life. Is what the scripture says. It has nothing to do with you front in front of people. And then you pray for folks. And now you want to go to speaking in tongues. That's not the Bible. That's not the Bible. Hey, Gerald, bless you, my brother. That is not the scriptures. The scriptures clearly tells you what speaking in tongues is for. Right here, it tells you, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, it is for, it is for you to edify yourself. It is for you to grow yourself. It is for you to improve yourself. That's why the scripture speaks about on first freedom, praying in your most holiest faith. So when you're down and out, you're going through, you begin to pray in tongue. It is building you up and it is giving you wisdom on things pertaining to your life. It has nothing to do with you standing up on front like you super deep, like you so holy, holy. It has not, that is not scripture. That's pride. No. And the scripture speaks about that God resists the proud. So now you cannot get any understanding because he resists the proud, but he gives grace. I'm going to say it and I'm going to keep going to the humble. Okay, now watch this here. But he who prophesies, see, he's given clear distinction of the truth about prophesying and speaking in tongues. But he who prophesies in, in interpreting the divine will and purpose and teaching with inspiration. Watch this. This is what he does. Watch this. This is what he does. And, and, watch, and watch what he do it to him. Edifies and improves. Watch this here. The church. Good God Almighty. That's good by itself, Pastor. And promotes growth. Watch this here. In Christian wisdom. Piety means. Uh, Piety has to do with. Devoted, devoted religion to your Christianity. You devoted piety, holiness, and happiness. Let me say it again. But he who prophesies, interpreting the divine will and purpose and teaching with inspiration, edifies and improves the church. He edifies and improves the church and promotes growth in Christian wisdom. 
system, piety, holiness, and happiness. So now we see that there is a great distinction, a clear distinction between speaking in tongues and prophesying. Speaking in tongues has nothing to do with you in the church. With no understanding of what you're doing, you don't have any wisdom on it, and you're in front like you did. That's not God. That's not what the scriptures say. Prophesying has nothing to do with you, prophet, getting the saints on front street and spilling out their negative business. Speaking about rebuking the saints through prophecy, that is not the scriptures. The scriptures clearly, I got to go by the word of God. The scripture clearly says it is to edify and improve the church and it promotes growth in Christian wisdom, piety, holiness, and happiness. It has nothing to do with you prophesying and telling folks, yeah, I know what you did last night and the Lord told me that you slept with that person last night and the Lord told me that you went over there and got high last night and the Lord told me that you're thinking about going over here and doing something you ain't got no business doing and he wants you to stop. That's not, boy, I'm talking about the scriptures, the Bible that most folk don't read that they want to, that they clear that they done gave their life to. This is right there, this is right there. That's not what it means. It's not what it means. Let's go on. Now I wish, verse 5, now I wish that you might all speak in unknown tongues, but more especially, I want you to prophesy, to be inspired, to preach, and to interpret the divine will and purpose. Watch this here. Watch what this here. This is what the scripture said. Apostle Paul is saying this here to the believers. He's talking to the folk in church. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's not talking to folk in the world. Apostle Paul is coming to the church and he's telling us what he said. He who prophesies, who is inspired to preach and teach, watch them, is greater. Watch this here. This here is, boy, this here is crazy. More useful and more important then he who speaks in unknown tongues, good God Almighty, he said he who prophesies in church is more useful, more important than the one that speaks in tongues. Apostle Paul said that. See, this is why we got to really get inside the scriptures and begin to ask God and ask the Holy Spirit to give us real keen insight. I had, when I first started studying scripture, I said, Lord, I need you to pull the covers off the scriptures. Bam. I need you to show me the depthness of who you are. Because I know it's deeper than the surface. The scripture says that the letter kills. And most folk in church go strictly off the letter. And it kills souls. It even kills their own soul because they operate out of religion. That's where religion comes from. You go strictly by the letter. But the, but the end of that scripture said, but the spirit, hey, gives life. It's the spirit that's inside the scriptures that brings a life out, that bursts a life of Christianity, that brings power, that brings understanding, that brings wisdom. So that we can carry our cross on a daily basis and be proud to stand firm. Ah, come on, boy, preach this thing. Watch this. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking in unknown tongues, how shall I make it to your advantage? Watch this here. I know y'all don't want to hear this here because a lot of y'all be speaking in tongues in church on Sundays and stuff like this. Except I speak to you either in revelation, disclosure of God's will to man, in knowledge or in prophesying or in instruction. Now he's saying, if I come to you speaking in tongues, I need to have some understanding of what I'm speaking about in tongues. He's going to go on to tell you. And he go through verse 7, 6 through 7, no, 9, 
6 through 11. And he's speaking on the uh, type of musical instruments. And he's saying, if you play in a pipe or a harp or a trumpet, and I don't know the distinct sound between them, how am I supposed to recognize it? If you're doing this here, how am I supposed to recognize it? Then he goes on to say, oh, in verse 12, so is it with yourselves, since you are so eager and ambitious to possess spiritual endowments and manifestations of the Holy Spirit, concentrate on striving to excel and to abound in them in ways, watch this, watch this, that will build up the church. Jesus, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Prophesying, mm, you have to build up the church. Prophesying has nothing to do, you won't see it nowhere in the Bible. Prophesying has nothing to do with you standing a saint up in front of everybody and rebuking them and saying, thus said the Lord. It's not God. It's not God. It's not the, I'm, I, I'm talking about the scriptures right here now. First Corinthians. 14. <laughs> it's not God. Verse 12. Verse 4. It's not the Lord. It's not the Lord. We're talking about the truth about prophesying and speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues, the scriptures and told us over in verse 2, over in verse 3, over in verse 4. Speaking in tongues has everything to do with you edifying, building up yourself in the Lord. With you, it has everything with you getting wisdom and understanding in the things that's pertaining to your life in the Lord. Because your spirit, the Holy Spirit that's in you, has understanding. Your mind, your flesh has no understanding. So you're supposed to be praying in tongues in the Holy Spirit. Not praying in tongues in your flesh. See, many of y'all pray in tongues in your flesh because you want to be seen and like you're super deep, like I said. That's not the scriptures. You won't gain anything from it. You will not gain anything from it. You have to do like the scripture says. The scripture said when you're speaking in tongues, it is solely for you to build up yourself, for you to get wisdom in through the Holy Spirit. It is not for you to stand up in front of people in public and sound like you super deep. It's not that. Many of y'all are mimicking what you've heard from somebody. Therefore, it's not profiting you anything. It's not. I'm trying to teach you the truth so that you can repent. Watch this here. Have a change, change the way you think. Change the way you see this thing about speaking in tongues. Change the way you see this thing about prophesying. Because the way that most of you all see it now, is it is not the word of the Lord. It is not the instructions of the Lord. Let's go on. Therefore, the person who speaks in an unknown tongue, watch this here should pray, watch this here now, for the power to interpret and explain what he says. I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who know how to interpret tongues. Mm. <clears throat> See, this stuff is hard swallow, especially when you've been doing stuff for a long time and you find out that you've been doing it the wrong way. But all we got to do is just stop. Stop and say, you know what? I'm done with that. I need to get the right instructions because I need power. See, the, see, the, see, the one thing that separates a Christian from any other religion whether it be Muslim, whether it be Buddhist, whether it be atheist, whether it be Catholic, whether it be Mormon, whether it be Hebrew lights, regardless of what religion it is, the one thing that separates a Christian from any other religion should be the power of the Holy Ghost. 
But seeing that most are ignorant, un ignorant means unlearned. Seeing that most are unlearned about the scriptures because you don't get in your scriptures, you do things that are contrary to God's instructions, and therefore there's no power because he can only move through his word by the way he lay it down. He can't do otherwise. So now you have an understanding now through the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4. Verse 5, that speaking in tongues has everything to do with you and God, not you standing before people sounding deep. It has everything to do with you building yourself up and you getting wisdom through the Holy Spirit, not your mind, on things pertaining to your life. Prophesying has everything to do with you uplifting building and encouraging and edifying the church. What the scripture says. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to finish this here. Now watch this here. When he's speaking about the church, this is what prophecy is for. Now he's going to give this here last instructions. Verse 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? See, he's talking to the church and he's trying to teach the church on how to prophesy and how to speak in tongues and what order is that. This is why when you have the whole church like on prayer nights, I used to belong to Rivers of Living Waters with Apostle Stephen Garner, best church I've been at. I learned so much from that. That man's a powerful teacher. He's a powerful apostle. I learned so much from that church. Praise God for him. On Tuesdays and I believe Thursday nights, we used to have prayer to where it was a gathering to where we all prayed in tongues. Prayed in tongues. But I can bet you that many of them didn't understand what they was doing. See, because you have to have an understanding of it. So we were praying in tongues. And then you have somebody go up on the mic and speak the word of God and pray and speak the word of God in English. While everybody else pray in tongues and we take turns. You cannot have on a Sunday when visitors come and all this stuff, and you have visitors show up, and now you want the whole church to pray in tongues and stuff. That's not scripture because they are they are going to look at you like you're crazy, and it's a trick of the devil. They might not come back. No, it's not God. It's not God. It's not God. It's not God. Now watch the prophecy. But if all prophesy, watch it, and there come in one that believe not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus all and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Prophecy, when you prophesy to an unbeliever, you are never supposed to speak in tongues to unbelievers, not God. When you prophesy to an unbeliever, you are supposed to be prophesying things that they know only them and God know, nobody else. They don't even know you. And you come and straight no chaser. And these are the folk that you prophesy rebuke to. The scripture clearly says it. Come on, man. Let me read and amplify to show you that the scripture clear said, then I'm done. Verse 24. But if all prophesy, giving inspired testimony and interpreting the divine will and purpose, and an unbeliever or untaught outsider comes in, he is told of his sins and reproved and convicted and convinced by all. And his defects and needs are examined estimated, determined, 
and he is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are laid bare. And so falling on his face, he will worship God, declaring that God is among you in very truth. When you prophesy to an unbeliever, this is when you expose their sins. This is where you expose the deep things that's in them that only God knows. You don't go to a dolphin and tell them where the Lord see you have to stop getting high. They know that. No, there's something deeper that they're doing that God is that that a God is gonna put on front so they know that whoa, wait a minute. Now I didn't know nobody knew that. Boy, you know Lord. You know Jesus. Woman, you know the Lord. You don't go to a prostitute and tell her. Thus said the Lord, you have to get off these hill streets and stop selling your body. She know that. No, some mother stuff that go in there. Now. They go deep past the crevices of the bone where God will reveal. Where God will reveal. Ah, Jesus Christ. And you can speak in tongue before you even get to that person. Speak in tongue to yourself because now it's between you and God. You have an understanding of what you're doing. So when you get to that person, now the Holy Spirit then gave you deep insight and you can, ah, bam! And they fall on it like the scriptures say. Never prophesy to a saint and expose their sins. That's not what the scripture says. That is for unbelievers, the world, so that they can believe and know for a shorty that God is in you. I hope you all got a clear understanding of what I was saying as far as the truth about prophesying and speaking in tongues. I pray you grow in it. Go to my Facebook ministry page, Full Impact Ministries, and join my page, and go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pastor Eric Hood, E-R-Y-K. I'm bringing you some powerful stuff about the true nature of God. I want you to grow in it. I do really want you to grow in it. This is your boy, E. Hood, Pastor Full Impact Ministries, Social Media Ministry, Bring the Social Media by Storm. I'm out. Ha. Peace.